Hey everyone and welcome back. It's Monday, October 21st, just a couple weeks away from the election. I don't know about you, but this news cycle has me spinning. It's definitely been a roller coaster, that's for sure. So to help us all make sense of it, we're diving into the latest from The Independent. Their live updated article, Election 2024 Live Updates. Trump slams Harris as a cognitive mess. Cheney urges pro-life voters to back Democrat has a lot to unpack. It really does. There's so much happening, especially with those nail-biter races in the battleground states. Right. Speaking of which, that new Washington post Shar school poll, it shows just how close it is. Those seven key states are too close to call. Absolutely. And those are always the ones to watch, right? Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, North Carolina, and Nevada. They really could go either way. Why is it that those states are always so unpredictable? Well, they have a real mix of everything, urban areas, rural communities, different industries, diverse populations. It makes for a really interesting political landscape because they don't have a history of consistently voting one way or the other. It all comes down to who actually shows up to vote. And speaking of showing up, the candidates are making their final push on the campaign trail. Trump was just in North Carolina. Yes, he made a couple of appearances, one visiting a town hit by Hurricane Helene, then later a rally in Greenville. And from what I gathered, those were two very different events. Yeah, during the hurricane visit, he was talking about how FEMA funds are being used for illegal migrants. It's a way of tapping into those anxieties some people feel about immigration, especially during a crisis. Interesting tactic. Then at the rally, it was like a complete 180. Right. He really went after Kamala Harris directly, calling her a cognitive mess. Mm -hmm. Much more of a direct attack on his opponent. And then on the flip side, we've got Kamala Harris teaming up with Liz Cheney. Talk about an unexpected duo. They're focusing on suburban women voters, especially those who might be having second thoughts about Trump. Yeah, targeting those suburban districts is a smart move for both of them. It'll be interesting to see if they can actually pull it off, considering their very different views on, well, pretty much everything. Especially abortion. It's pretty remarkable that Cheney, who is pro-life, is actually encouraging voters who agree with her on that issue to still consider voting for Harris. It's a really nuanced argument she's making, suggesting that Harris is ultimately a better choice for women's health care overall. I wonder how much sway that'll actually have with pro-life voters. Right. It's a really complex issue for a lot of people. We'll see how it plays out. Definitely one to watch. Now let's shift gears a bit and talk about early voting because we've got some really interesting numbers coming out of Georgia. They are pretty remarkable, aren't they? Absolutely smashing previous records. Which makes you wonder, is this a sign of high voter enthusiasm this year? It's certainly possible. I mean, historically, higher early voting turnout does tend to correlate with higher overall turnout. Yeah. But it's still too early to say for sure. We'll need more data to really know what's going on. And you know we'll be watching those numbers closely. Now, before we move on, there are a couple other things from this independent article I just have to share. They're just too good not to. Okay, I'm intrigued. What else caught your eye? Okay, so picture this. A poll worker in Minnesota got fired because they left ballots unattended in their car trunk, of all places, <laughs> okay. right? Yeah, you can imagine how that raised some eyebrows. Election security is such a big deal right now. It feels very 2024, you know. <laughs> and speaking of anxiety-inducing election stuff, do you know that people are actually gambling on the outcome, like, with real money? Yeah. Those prediction markets are wild. There's one called Poly Market, where people are betting millions on who they think will win. It's like the political version of fantasy football, except with much higher stakes. Absolutely. Yeah. It just goes to show you how invested people are in this election. Yeah. It really does make you wonder what will happen on November 5th. For real. And yeah. with so much on the line this election, this independent article mentions a lot of the big ones like the economy, healthcare, and climate change. What are you seeing as the major issues for voters this time around? Well, the economy is always a biggie, right? Mm. Especially in those battleground states where it's anyone's game. People want to know about jobs, inflation, you know, the whole financial security thing. And how are the candidates trying to appeal to those concerns? Well, Trump's sticking with that populist message from 2016, talking about bringing back manufacturing jobs and cracking down on trade deals, that kind of thing. Trying to recapture that magic, huh? Right. It worked before. What about Harris? How is she addressing those economic anxieties? She's going for a more progressive approach. Yeah talking about investing in things like clean energy and education. Her argument is that those are the areas that create jobs and boost the economy in a way that benefits everyone. It's amazing how different their strategies are. For sure. 
But it really highlights the stark contrast between their visions for the country, doesn't it? Absolutely. And speaking of stark contrasts, we can't forget about health care. That's another issue that's always top of mind, especially now with so much uncertainty about the Affordable Care Act and what will happen with abortion rights after Roe v. Wade. It's a sensitive subject for a lot of people. Yeah, health care is personal. It often comes down to people's deeply held beliefs and values. Definitely. So how are the candidates handling such a complex issue? Well, with Trump, we've seen those consistent efforts to repeal and replace Obamacare. And his judicial appointments definitely lean towards a more conservative stance on abortion. Ann Harris. She's a strong supporter of the Affordable Care Act. She's made it clear she'd protect it and expand access to health care, including reproductive health care, which puts them at opposite ends of the spectrum. So on those big issues like the economy and health care, they're offering really different solutions. Yeah, it's more than just policy differences at this point. It's about two fundamentally different paths for the country. And then there's climate change, which is impossible to ignore these days. How are the candidates addressing that? We're seeing a big divide there, too. Trump's downplayed the threat of climate change in the past. Remember when he called it a hoax? I do. Plus, he's rolled back environmental regulations and withdrew the U.S. from the Paris Agreement. And Harris has the opposite stance. Exactly. She's made it a key part of her campaign, promising to rejoin the Paris Agreement and really invest in clean energy. It really drives home the point that this election isn't just about the next four years, but about the future, like the planet's future. It really is that consequential. And it's not just these huge global issues. Social justice has become a major part of the national conversation, too. How are the candidates responding to that? You're right. Things like racial inequality, LGBTQ plus rights, they've all become so central, especially after the murder of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter protests. And those conversations are definitely playing a role in this election. So how are the candidates handling those issues? Well, Trump tends to focus on law and order, framing the protest as riots. It's an appeal to voters worried about crime and immigration. And Harris. She's more empathetic in her approach. She acknowledges the systemic racism and inequality in the country and has pledged to tackle it through policy changes and criminal justice reform. It just goes to show you that these issues are really complicated, deeply ingrained in our history, and there's no quick fix. Definitely not. But the important thing is that we're having these conversations. It's a lot to think about, that's for sure. And with just two weeks left, it feels like things are only going to get more intense from here. Oh, absolutely. This is the time when things really heat up. So how do we even process it all? I feel like we're bombarded with polls and news and opinions constantly. It's true. There's so much noise out there. I think the key is to be really mindful about the information you're consuming. You're right. It's easy to get swept up in it all. It really is. My advice for these next couple of weeks is to try to tune out some of that noise especially all the predictions, and just focus on the issues you really care about. Makes sense. Think about the challenges facing our country, the solutions that resonate with you personally. At the end of the day, it's about so much more than who wins or loses. Absolutely. It's about our shared future. The decisions made in this election, they're going to have a lasting impact. Being informed, being engaged, that's what matters. You've given us a lot to think about today. Any final thoughts for our listeners as they get ready to head to the polls? Just remember that your vote is your voice. It's how you make a difference. So stay informed, stay engaged, and make sure your voice is heard. Couldn't have said it better myself. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder all those big questions as we head into these final weeks. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. Who knows what the next two weeks will bring, but you can bet we'll be back to break it all down for you. Until next time.